Um, Bomb the System, the idea, the idea began with a short film that I wrote, directed, produced, edited, all at uh, New York University as an undergraduate student uh, majoring in film and television. Um, I'd always been obsessed with graffiti culture and hip hop culture. Um, I even tried my hand at writing graffiti growing up in, as a, a junior high and, and high school student in uh, the Washington DC area. And when I came to New York City, um, I made friends with a lot of active graffiti writers and a couple of them uh, I decided to, to make a movie around, a, a short film that was partly documentary style and partly, partly fictional. And so I shot this film as my thesis project at New York University. And afterwards, after I graduated, um, I got the idea to expand the, the short into a feature length film. And so I spent two years writing the script. After I finished the script, um, I sent it to a producer friend of mine and he loved it and decided to take a chance and move out to New York. He was, he was living in, in Los Angeles at the time. And um, Ben Recchi, he decided to take a chance on and move out to New York and, and crashed, slept on my floor basically and we, we uh, began the, the initial stages of, of producing and financing the film. Using the short film and the, the feature length script we went out to investors and we got investment, we got our initial investment for, for the film and um, we got, we secured an office and we partnered up with Soul Tryon who was another New York uh, area producer and um, uh, definitely um, you know specialized in independent film and, and he was the, kind of the the missing link and so once once we had Soul on board we began we began the casting process uh, we decided we were going to shoot the film entirely in New York City because it was where we lived it, it was it was uh, and it was also for me it was really important because of the movie Wild Style being shot in New York and and New York being the the mecca of graffiti art and culture you know um, Graffiti, modern day graffiti actually started in Philadelphia, but uh, New York City is, is the mecca. And so we, 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 uh, we felt it was really important that we only shoot there. Um, so we began the casting process and, and, and uh, the most important role, of course, was Blessed, the lead, the lead actor and the hero of the story. And, and we spent an entire summer searching for, for Blessed and um, auditioning uh, <clears throat> local kids. And, and it wasn't until we we uh, we cast Bones Malone and and he he suggested Mark Weber who had who had been in uh, a movie with him and well, we immediately contacted him and and that's when Mark read the script and and totally fell in love with it and jumped on board and and that was and that and you know the rest is pretty much history we shot the film over 28 days it was a very grueling period but I think that answers. It. Specifically, as an actor, Mark has a very naturalistic quality to him. He, he doesn't try to act, he just is. And that was, that's always very important for me, because um, I, I wanted to shoot the film with a naturalistic style, documentary style. So I didn't want, you know, um, kind of a more traditional approach to the acting. I wanted it to actors to almost pretend the cameras weren't there and it was we were shooting a documentary in some in some parts of it that's actually what we did also <clears throat> coincidentally and I didn't know this beforehand but Mark was a graffiti writer in Philly and had actually been kicked out of his high school for writing graffiti so that was to us that was incredible that was the best thing that could have could have happened you know Uh, I, I got the script uh, sent to my agent, um, and like any other script that I get, and um, I just I, I read the script and immediately fell in love with it because I had um, grew up in Philadelphia um, writing graffiti and, and ran with a local crew in Philadelphia, and uh, was actually kicked out of high school when I was 16 for writing graffiti, and had always wanted to make a film about graffiti. A uh, contemporary film, not a an old school film, but a film showing how graffiti writers write nowadays. And uh, I read the script, and I thought it was great. And I went and sat down and and met with Adam, and you know, sat across a guy who was the exact same age as me, and um, who 
shared a lot of the same um, opinions and ideas and similar taste in terms of just uh, filmmaking and films and, and, and life in general. And, and we really hit it off and, and that's how it started for me. My life has been nothing but one gigantic conflict. <laughs> um, and uh, He gravitates towards drama. Yeah. I, I, I need a lot of drama in my life. Uh, if I'm not stressed out about something... You're insecure if you're not. Yeah. I'm insecure? If you're not stressed out. Okay. I am insecure. But um, I... For me, I don't know. Like it's interesting because the I I'd never went to college. I, I mean, I got uh, I got kicked out of high school for writing graffiti. So, uh, it, my my life I've had. Um, I grew up with my mom. You know, single parent, and uh, just a really incredible woman, and is really my best friend. Um, so I had a very unique upbringing and uh, a very supportive parent who um, instilled in me a lot of. Uh, important qualities about decision making and about um, how to uh, you know make my dreams come true essentially by setting specific goals and things like that so um, I've always I feel like I've dealt well with with um, conflict and, and um, having to make tough decisions and uh, because of having a very you know extremely supportive mother in my life You got any crazy stories? The whole thing was crazy. The whole, the whole shoot was just, I mean, to make a movie in New York City is just, to make an independent film in New York City is really hard and tough, let alone a film about graffiti, you know. Um, it was next to impossible at some points. I mean, to go and have to, you know, write on walls and not really have permission to do it it was always a it was always a test of our 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 will and our our strength to get through. What what in, you got any? I mean, yeah, it it <clears throat> it was baptism by fire. Basically, we were all first time we were all first timers, you know, for all intents and purposes, from from top to bottom, the producers, the cinematographer, the writer director, you know, Mark. Uh, he was it was his his pretty much his first uh, lead. Was it the first big lead role in a film, and and he was a co-executive producer. It, so, so there was a there was an obvious um, naivety. Uh, we didn't we didn't we had no clue that 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 um, so much shit was gonna go down, but. Uh, the, the 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 quintessential story I guess was the first day of the shoot. It was um, like September seventeenth of two thousand two. It was a like beautiful day. It was like seventy five degrees, sunny day, and um, we were shooting down in, in the East Village at uh, Kiev in front of Kiev Diner, and there was an actor that had originally been cast to play the role of uh, Bobby Cox. Um, most people don't know this, but Al Sapienza uh, from The Sopranos, who plays Bobby Cox in Bomb the System, was not the original actor in the movie. It was it was John Campo, who was a friend of ours and uh, a theater actor in New York. Um, so on the first day of the shoot, uh, on the third shot of the the film, he fell and uh, tripped over a, a, a boom mic and broke his leg. Um, it was it was horrible. Uh, the ambulances rushed to the set. He was carted away. Everybody was like, some a lot of people were just in tears. Just like it was just pretty traumatizing. Just to even see like the bone split out of his skin. It just incredible. Just incredibly horrific. People crowded around the set like, what what's going on? You know, like because it's the East Village in the middle of the day. It's packed. You know, so. We we had to we had to salvage what's left of the day. Um, there's a million billion things going on in my head. You know, I'm thinking, are we going to finish this? Are we going to even be able to shoot this movie now? We lost we lost our our uh, antagonist. You know, oh, we're going to have to recast. Or are we? Is he going to be okay? Is he going to be able to be in the movie? 
so we're, we, we, we moved down to the Lower East Side to shoot another scene. And um, unbeknownst to us, we'd set up in front of uh, a, a deli where they were, they were uh, dealing heroin out of this deli. And um, you know, we, had, we had no clue. So we're, we're causing a big scene there, like shooting in front of this deli. And these guys are, I guess, you know, are obviously trying, trying to do their job. And we're, we're, uh, we're met kind of uh, putting a little monkey wrench into their, their, their operation. So they started to flex on us. And like three dudes got up in my producer's face, started getting up in the actor's face, pushing them, talking shit like, you know, like threatening threatening us with violence if we didn't if we didn't you know move down like just just get out of there. And um, at this point, like tempers were running really high because of what had happened earlier in the day. So my producer, you know, started to fight back and was like, I was like, this is not a situation we're gonna win. You know, like even if we do, I mean, even if we do like kick their asses, they can, they're probably just gonna leave and come back with guns. So I decided. We're gonna have to move the production. So we, what we did was we just moved down the block a couple blocks, and they pretty much left us alone. So we were able to salvage a couple shots from the night. But when I got home that night and was trying to trying to get some, you know, two or three hours of sleep, I get a phone call that Gano Grills has been arrested. The Gano who plays Buck Fifty in the movie, <laughs> and I just lost it. I just I just flipped out. I couldn't believe it. Like this was a, it was the pretty much a nail in the coffin of like uh, just one of the worst days of our lives and that was just day one yeah um but there's eight billion other stories i don't know if you well i mean there, i mean there's there's the brooklyn bridge too which i don't know how much we can really yeah we, talk we, about. we won't talk too much about it but we can definitely talk about how we shot that one night, what we did that one night. Yeah, we had we had absolutely uh, no permission, and um, it was at the height of 9/11 uh, security, and uh, it was about four of us, five of us. A crew of about five and a 35 millimeter camera yeah. in one light. In the rain, with a camera strapped, not a camera strapped to me. It, it was it was pretty pretty wild. We got shut down by the mayor's office spot for a week too in the middle of production, and had to finish the rest of the film without permits in Brooklyn and kind of in downtown Manhattan just stealing shots they threatened us with they threatened us with arrest they 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 uh, basically told us if we continue to shoot they would arrest us and confiscate confiscate the equipment and with the Brooklyn bridge uh, scene the insane thing about it is we we purposely decided to shoot in the rain we had a rain out that day because it was raining cats and dogs like we couldn't do anything so I had the bright idea to go shoot the Brooklyn Bridge scene because I basically thought, well, it's pouring rain. No one in their right mind is going to be on the Brooklyn Bridge in the pouring rain. And it actually worked out for the best because no one came by. It was like, you know, 11 or 11, 11.30 at night when we first, when we started shooting it. It was just empty and it was just pouring rain, you know, like we were mainly just afraid that Mark was going to get sick because it was so cold and rainy and he was just, you know, out there for hours, you know, like we were all covered up, but because of, of the scene, he obviously, he can't, you know, like we can't have blessed, you know, rocking an umbrella going out to spray paint on the bridge, you know, like, so, but, um, it ended up being, it ended up working out. It, I, it sounded in totally insane when like I told my producer, I want to shoot the Brooklyn bridge scene tonight. And he's like looking out his window, like, "What are you kidding? Are you are you, are you totally insane?" But but it, it worked out for the best, and no one came by, no one no one messed with us. The cops, no cops came by, and uh, we were we were lucky. But um, that's about all we can say about the Brooklyn Bridge scene because um, we're we, we're sworn to secrecy. We can't really tell anyone how we did it. Um, I can't, I don't know, um, probably close to 25 or 30. A lot of them you, you don't even really get to see, unfortunately, because, at, because this, in the scene we're, you know, we're covering actors and per certain parts we're not covering the graffiti. So like at, in the 80s scene, the, one of the first scenes of the movie, there's a, there's a tracking shot of young blessed walking up through this handball court. And in the back, there's like seven of the illest pieces you've ever seen and you don't even really get to see them unfortunately um 
and uh, you know, Y and N crew, like a bunch of a bunch of cats from Y and N crew and from from a, a, a few other crews were there painting these, doing these pieces, and um, they're just they're just beautiful, and and that's you know just part of uh, another a little aspect of the film that that's really special to me are are, are these these pieces uh, or these original works by some of the world's greatest graffiti writers and you don't they're just part of the backdrop you know um we're not we weren't making a documentary we were making a a, a feature and so we were following actors but if you look and if you you read you know if you really look and pause the pause the DVD or whatever like you can see a lot of like original work and um, I'd say uh, yeah I'd say like yeah 20 maybe 20 20 to 25 original pieces of artwork um, well I always I always knew that I wanted LP to do the score the question was just basically about getting to him. So we started placing phone calls over to Def Jux, who uh, their office was, you know, in downtown Manhattan. Eventually got through. Um, Amici, uh, LP's um, manager, and um, the guy who kind of runs the daily operation over at Def Jux was like, yeah, L's been dying to do a movie score for years he just hasn't had the opportunity and we're like well we're about to give him the opportunity if he wants to take it so he did and he met with us and Mark and I went over to his house slash studio out in Brooklyn and um, showed up and he wasn't even there and <laughs> and um, I think uh, who was it um, like Camu like showed up at the door and was like, oh, L just left with Aesop. I think they went to the deli. And we were like, oh, okay. So he comes back half an hour later. He's like, oh, do you, want, you guys want to sit down and play a little Grand Theft Auto, you know? And I was, like, and we were like, okay. So we chilled and finally L came back and he was like, who the fuck are you, you know? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this, I'm Adam, this is Mark. We're here with Bomb the System. He's like, Bomb System, hmm. Oh yeah, I think I've heard of you guys. You guys are the ones that were looking for somebody to do the score. And, and we're like, yeah, dude, you down? And he's like, he's like, I heard Bones Malone's in that movie, and, and we're like, yeah, yeah, Bones is in the movie, and he's like, all right, I'm down. <laughs> that was it, you know. Like he just like, he was friends with Bones. Bones actually lived on his block. It was like a bunch of heads living this one little area out in Brooklyn. Um, and so like, he was down.